need Sharon to call in right now. Sharon, call in the show right now. Because the reads are there, the notes are there. Where is Sharon at? When the accessories like Nini, but then they can't be in church, but then they can't do this. What the fuck? First, when you had the choir director sitting with the with the piano player and she got pregnant, all types of shit. I'm sorry, but is she the one that stole the wig, Jason? I'm gonna light your ass up for that one. I'm gonna need an Ancestry.com because I don't see a bit of fucking Puerto Rican. You're gonna have to get over that. We got over that shower curtain in the background. You're gonna have to get over bitches going left and right. I'm talking about it, you know why? Because that's the only good pussy he'll ever have in his fucking mouth. I'm glad. Instead of running your mouth, run on a fucking treadmill, bitch. How about that? I love when Sharon shows up because Sharon be having the motherfucking notes. She's going to go through them. Go ahead, Sharon. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. You guys know who I am. I'm Queen Sharon, Queen of the Mess Report, where I cover the mess so you don't have to stress. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Hot Off the Press. Welcome back, guys. Um, happy Tuesday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. My weekend was pretty boring. You guys, what I did is I binge watched this show called Euphoria. Now, um, I know that the actor that plays Fez just recently passed away, and I didn't know anything about the show, and my my children told me about it afterwards. Well, my oldest child, because it's very inappropriate, so my youngest two ain't going to be watching it. But uh, my oldest uh, child, who is you know 20 years old, was telling me about it and was actually telling me that it was a really good show. So I said, okay, I like for shows to build up and kind of to be able to binge watch them because I hate waiting for the next episode to air. I hate that. If it's a new show out, I will wait till that show goes all the way to the end or at least midway where I could be watching it while other shows are still, new shows are adding on, new episodes are adding on because I hate waiting for the next week for the next show. I hate it. So I was binge watching it and I got to say like the jerk, I'm getting more into it. I'm into the second season. But anyway, it's it, it's, a, it's a good show. It, it is. It's a good show. I hope they continue it. I, 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 the jury's still out. I don't know if I'm like, oh, my gosh. But then there are some parts where I'm like, oh, my gosh. But it's just weird. You guys got to go and watch it. You know, so that's what I did this weekend. I um just spent time with the family and been binge watched the show. Um, so it was a pretty relaxing weekend. So with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and put this bad boy up on the screen so we can get the show started. You know what this says. It says, uh, take care of your kids, do what you need to do. And if you need to put them motherfuckers to bed, then that's what you need to do. Okay. Um, I handle my kids because that's what came out of my womb. Um, and they're my responsibility. Your kids are your responsibility. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Screenshot the rest. Uh, at the end of the day, I have done my job. Job. Now let's get started. You know, I still, you know, was doing the natural. I gave the, you know, the 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 natural do or whatever. So you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. Okay, the jury is still out for me. I don't know. Everybody's saying that it's cute, and you know, I think that it's kind of cute. Uh, I don't know, it's just got to grow on, you know what I'm saying? Because the natural look I don't do too often. Um, but <clears throat> nevertheless, you know, um, my husband's fixing the lights, you guys. Thank you. So <sighs> let's get into it, you guys. It's time for the first segment. It's time for the message report. Now you guys know that we covered her last week. Uh, let's put this uh, uh, ridiculous trifling bitch up on the screen. Let's go ahead and put her up on the screen, babe. Erica Menes. Yes, she is on the docket again this week. 
Um, Erica Mena dropped from appearing in future episodes of the show Hush. Here's what they wrote. We do not condone Erica Mena's recent uh, reprehensible comment. She will be featured in the upcoming season of Hush, set to premiere later this year, as production was completed months ago. But in the event of additional seasons, she will not be a part of the cast. that this is wonderful. I think that this is great. Like I said, I do not believe in um, cancel culture, but I do believe in holding uh, people accountable for their actions. And as I stated last week, what Erica did was completely um, uh, inappropriate. You know, now we know that she has a lot of videos, uh, movies on Tubi. Okay. Um, and I don't know if that contract that she's going to be able to keep those contracts and appear in new upcoming movies. But uh, all I got to say is that Erica, you brought this shit on yourself. Maybe next time you should think about uh, what you're saying and what you're doing before you sit there and call somebody a blue monkey. Um, you know, I, I can't sit there and say that I'm disappointed, that I'm upset. I actually could go uh, without seeing uh, Erica Mena. So I, I think that, um, I think that this is a good thing, but I do want to speak on this real quick because this wasn't in the topics, but I think that we do need to stop having selective outrage. Everything that Eric Mena did was very inappropriate, but I just recently saw how Kenya Moore on Real Housewives of Atlanta went off on a new cast member um, and saying that she looked like she had a stroke when she was in an accident. So her mouth was kind of twisted up um, and she was actually picking on her and goddamn Candy's big ass apple head was sitting there and uh, laughing along with her. And I feel like we need to have outrage on issues on, I'm not saying every issue, but I think that is something that is so inappropriate because there are people that are battling with different disabilities. There are people that cannot control, uh, you know, their, 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 uh, facial expressions because of disabilities that they're battling with. And I just thought that that, that was really disgusting and really inappropriate. And I feel like that darn, uh, Kenya Moore should be held to the same standard that goddamn Erica Mena is. I am saying that we need to stop having selective outrage. That was something that was horrible that Kenya did. And I, I, I say fire both of them motherfuckers. I said, you fire Erica, fire Kenya too. Erica definitely deserved to get fired. And so does Kenya. But as time goes on, because this is something that just happened recently, we will keep you updated on what's going on in the Kenya situation, because I think that bitch got to go anyway. Plus the twirling season is over and she ain't nothing but boring. She don't went into the motherfucking candy category anyway. Both of them motherfuckers is boring. So they can just shoot, shoot on out the door. Okay, now let's get to the next topic on the docket. Let's go ahead and put this nigga up on the screen right here. I know you guys are probably sick about hearing about him, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, discuss this. Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. That's that hard ass motherfucker that be on the screen and acting like he really motherfucking got damn about that life and want to disrespect women and have strippers and ass bouncing around his son. Yep, that is him. That is the one and the only motherfucking blue face. Um, and you may not notice this face because it was a different face. And the nigga looked like he from the goddamn group One Direction. Okay, that motherfucker could have been Harry Styles himself. Amazing when you see where people come from. Let's get into the topic. Now, Blueface says he doesn't plan to sue the man who claimed they were romantically involved but wants the LGBT, LGBTQ community to hold him accountable. I'm not gay. Now, let me break the story down to you. There was um, a white male that's part of the uh, gay community that allegedly, uh, not not allegedly, he did, he put it out there that he, he had had sex with Blueface and Blueface had got at him in his DMs. Um, and then later on came back and said, hey, I lied. Like pretty much we can't stand Blueface. Blueface be doing a bunch of shit on his page. So I did shit on my page. It was a joke. You guys gagged. What's the big deal? Well, I'm going to tell you what the big fucking deal is. This is disgusting. This is what makes people look at the gay community in a certain way because of shit like this that you're doing. It's not fun to sit there. It's not funny to sit there and play around with somebody's sexuality. And as much as we cannot stand blue face and that motherfucker goddamn gets on our nerves, you still cannot go around and sit there and put accusations out on somebody that you know are not true that can be damaging to him for whatever reason and cause uh, problems with his money, his life, relationships, whatever it may be, and then come back out and sit there and be like, oh, 
just for the hell of it, I lied, okay? I think that you were disgusting individual. Like, nigga, you ain't got nothing better than do, better to do. And them motherfucking outfits that you thought you was rocking with them wigs on, bitch, you didn't look cute, okay? You need to be working on your style a little bit more and that hair a little bit more instead of sitting there and trying to fuck up people's lives and ruin people's lives. You thought that people was going to gag at the, the, the fact that you called him gay and said that he slept with you. Then he also said he did still did try to get into his DMs. Um, and I don't know how true that is, but if I was you in this situation and I didn't even bother getting the picture, cause we're not going to give this man the clout that he's motherfucking looking for. Uh, bitch, I wouldn't speak on it no more because if, if, if blue face wanted to, you, you literally came out and, and, and admitted that you defamed this man. Um, don't you understand? That's what goddamn Tasha, uh, Cardi B just sued Tasha K for. Okay. And the $4 million of goddamn Tasha K, oh, Cardi B, you need to keep your motherfucking mouth shut because Blueface is choosing not to sue you, which I don't know how much that's going to last because when these bitches finally do come to their senses and stop making this nigga money, he may be circling back around to you. So if I was you, I would just keep your mouth shut, disappear, okay? And I do agree with Blueface, which I never thought I would hear myself saying, but I do think that the LGBTQ... Um, IA plus community does need to hold uh, this nigga accountable, okay? We need to hold our people accountable. When Carly Russell came out here with that fucking bogus ass story, we held her accountable. She's being held accountable. This young man needs to be held accountable as well. It's already bad enough that people are outing people and saying that they're down low, down low in the closet, privately recording conversations, but to sit there and put an accusation on somebody and then to come out and sit there and say, oh, I just did it for the hell of it so that you guys would gag is unacceptable. Hold this nigga motherfucking accountable, okay? Let's go ahead and get to the next topic on the docket. Let's put this nigga back up on the screen. Put Blueface back up there in case they didn't get a look the first time, babe. Here's Blueface again. He's also the next topic on the docket. Now, Blueface explains why he has a problem with who Krishan has around the baby. He explained, hold on, because my eyes just blurred. He explained that her godparents that she has the baby around, allegedly the godfather, essayed her. Now, you guys, I'm not going to say the word, put two and two together. You two be real finicky about saying certain words. You think of what happens when somebody messes with you inappropriately and you don't want to. S-A. You guys put that together, okay? Um, that allegedly essayed her, and she told this to Blueface. He claims that she is only around them for money, and he doesn't want those type of people around his child. Now, why this again had to come out on the internet, I don't understand at all. I don't understand and I don't get it. Now, I do think that Blueface is concerned. If this, in fact, did happen and Krishan did tell him this, then absolutely, 100%. I wouldn't want anybody like that around my child either, okay? But we don't know if this is true or if it's not true. Krishan hasn't even responded on this yet. But I will say this, why does it have to be out on the internet? Something that's that serious, okay? It's something that can really be discussed between the two of you. And if you're that concerned, Blueface, then reach out to her. She already said that she's not going to keep the baby out of your life. So you have access to her to communicate with her. OK, this is stuff that you can sit there and you can talk to her about that in private. This is something that is really serious. These are really serious uh, uh, allegations. OK, accusations that you're making. God forbid that they that they're not true, that you're just doing something for a storyline. We don't know, but people's lives are really involved in this. And Krishan, if this is the case, then I hope you're smart enough to know not to keep uh, your baby around these type of people because these are the type of people that should not be around your child. I also, though, while we're on this topic, though, want to give Krishan um, uh, props. She did get the baby dedicated. She got Krishan Jr. dedicated. Um, in, in her church, okay, by her pastor. I thought that that was beautiful. The baby also, she also took the baby to the first football game. Now, I'm going to tell you this, you know, I hate to be one of them mamas that sits there and is wagging her finger, but I will say this, Krishan, your baby is seven days old. You do not need to be taking that baby everywhere. That baby was up on that goddamn church altar and was just getting passed around and everybody was gathered around. There is reasons why they tell you to keep your baby in the house for six weeks. That baby does not need to be out and about. And COVID is still very much real. Let alone did you need to have him at a motherfucking uh, football game. All that is coming. Okay. All that is coming. Spend your time 
okay? And postpartum depression is real. You think everything is fine and you try to jump back into the swing of things. And before you know it, you're sitting there and questioning and wondering what is going on with all of the emotions that you're feeling. Take this time as mommy me time. Go sit your ass down, cradle your baby, feed your baby, love your baby, watch some TV, have that bonding uh, uh, mother, son, mother, child contact and time that needs to happen when you have a baby, not just for the baby, but for you also. Okay. Now, and I'm just, I'm just going to say that now at the end of the day, it's your child. You can do what the fuck you want to do. As I say in the beginning of, of the, every show, your kids is your kids. My kids is my kids. Now I can give my advice and I can tell y'all to put the motherfuckers to bed so they don't have to hear this shit on this show. But at the end of the day, if you don't do it, that is your choice and your responsibility. So at the end of the day, if you don't take that advice, that is your choice and your responsibility. But congratulations on you for uh, for you and the baby and Krishan Jr. for sitting there and dedicating um, the baby to the Lord. I think that that is a beautiful thing. I think that you're going to be a wonderful mother, but you just got to slow it down a little bit, Krishan. And Blueface, take the shit off the motherfucking internet and go talk to her uh, uh, privately. That's, that's, that's an issue y'all need to talk about privately because we don't know if it's true or not true. Now it's going a little too far. Okay? Um, you guys, we're going to breeze through this. Oh, we're going to breeze through this because it's, it's late and Queen is tired. Now, let's go to the next topic on the docket. I got to give this woman a hand clap of praise. Put her up. <laughs> now, Vice President Kamala Harris hosts the first hip-hop event at the Vice President's residence. There was performers there such as Lil Wayne, Fat Joe, and Remy Ma, and more. And of course, you know, our nigga Jason Lee was there representing for us all, okay? Let's put the next picture up on there. You guys, Kamala Harris was getting it. She was dancing. She was doing everything that she needed to do. Do we have another picture? Okay, boom. There she goes right there, dancing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Grooving. She, I can't say she got her groove back because she ain't never lost her groove. Um, I just got to sit there and just, you know, give her, give, give her her props. You know, good for her was sitting there and celebrating and acknowledging our culture. Um, it was a little weird with Lil Wayne being up there, uh, considering that he was representing Trump and voted for Trump and was wearing a Trump shirt. But, you know, hey, maybe he maybe he decided to change, you know, his mind with uh, supporting and representing the Hot Cheeto. Everybody has uh, the right to do that. Um, you know, I thought that this was a great experience. Kamala looked beautiful. Y'all know pink and green is my favorite motherfucking colors. And she rocked the fuck out of that pink suit. Okay. And when she let the blouse out and the colors, you got to see it. She was beautiful. She was great. Hand clap of, uh, of praise for this beautiful woman. Right. <laughs> Now, this next topic saddens me, and I hate that I have to cover it, but you know the deal. I cover the mess, so you don't have to stress. Babe, go ahead and put them up on the screen. Here we go. I love them, too. I, I, I love this couple. I really do. All right, let's get into it. Iman Shumpert was allegedly caught creeping with another woman behind Tiana Taylor's back. The woman posted a video of her, of her posted up with Iman and with her wearing his chain. You guys, this story saddens me so much because I truly, I mean, I am a Tiana Taylor fan. I think she is one of the artists out there that is so underrated. This girl can sing. She can dance. She can act. I mean, she can produce. I, she is just tens all across the board, and her body is fucking phenomenal, okay? Phenomenal. Now, in the videos I did, I went to go do my investigating, and I looked at the videos, and this bitch, this side bitch, yes, she does have his chain on, okay? And she is posted up on him, leaning on him. Not a lean on him like, oh, we homies, but a leaning on him like, oh, after this, you're going to take me home, homie, okay? That's what it was looking like. I hate this. I hate this. And I got to ask you niggas, why when the fuck you have a good ass woman? Do you sit there and you want to go cheat and you want to go sit there and dibble and dabble? It's a motherfucking 80 20 rule. You motherfucking got an 80. You look and see something that you don't got, but it only amounts to 20. And then when you go over there to the 20, bitch, then you're missing the motherfucking 80. Okay. I knew we was in a moment of motherfucking despair when goddamn Jay Z treated on Beyonce. Cause I look at that woman and I sit there and say, I just don't see how. When you got a bitch that'll sit there, 
dance and turn you on, sit there and ride your dick like a motherfucking surfboard, and after that be able to sing you a lullaby to sleep, bitch, as you lay on her bosom and go to bed. That make her all my, that's a boss bitch, bitch. And you fuck that up. Iman, I don't know what the fuck you were doing. I know the story of how you and Tiana Taylor got together. She didn't even want your ass in the motherfucking beginning. You kept pursuing, oh, I lost my ring. You kept pursuing her and going on and on and on and on until the nigga, get, the, 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 the bitch gave you a motherfucking chance. She gave you a chance. And that's what's wrong with these niggas these days. You can't give a motherfucking chance. You can't have a little bit of sympathy for them. You can't try to do the right thing. You can't try to listen and fall in love with what's on the inside instead of the outside because they'll fuck you over every time. Now, we're going to keep up with this story. I hope that it is not true. Tiana has not spoken out about it. I have not heard anything else about it. But you guys know what's done in the dark always comes to the light. And you know the goddamn uh, hot off the press. We will find out what the fuck is going on and we will let you guys know. Iman, if you did this, I'm telling you right now, I don't like you no more. I don't fuck with you no more. You are the lowest scum, bottom of the barrel. Goddamn, you, 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 you need to be caged up somewhere because if you're going to fuck up something like Tiana Taylor and y'all got these beautiful children too, then nigga, you need to be caged up somewhere. Cage. Let's get to the next topic on the docket. All right, you guys, Florida football coach uh, suspends himself after viral video shows him cussing out one of his players. Let's go ahead and put the picture up on the screen, babe. You guys, so this is the coach right here, and this is the young man that he was cursing out, okay? Now, I got to tell you guys right now, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, I'm always transparent, and I'm going to be transparent right now. Queen fucked up. I fucked up. And I'm going to tell you how I fucked up because I get my notes together and I get the details and I write what I need to write and put in there. Y'all, I don't know who the fuck his, what, what his name is. Okay. I forgot to put his name in the motherfucking notes. I did. I forgot to put the gentleman, the, the, the young man that he cursed out and name in the motherfucking uh, notes as well, but it's okay. Okay. Because all you guys got to do is go look at the blogs right now. You're going to find it. It's everywhere. So let me go ahead and explain it. This white man right here, am I pointing to the white man, babe? This white man right here was in this black young man's face and was cursing at him and yelling at him and calling him all types of bitches and pussies and was telling him to get the fuck up and he was going to rock his shit and he was going to punch him and go tell your mama and he told him, you my bitch, all of this stuff that he motherfucking said. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. He sat there and he said all of this shit to this goddamn young man and got in his face and was screaming, screaming at him. And this young man plays football for this college uh, th at this college is what he was a football coach at this college. And sorry, you guys, the names I fucked up on this topic. But anyway, we'll roll with it. He's calling him all types of motherfucking names. And I bet you that that goddamn black boy felt humiliated. He told that nigga that you think you a gangster. You think you a gangster, nigga. You my bitch. OK. This enraged a lot of motherfucking people, and I'm going to tell y'all the motherfucking truth. It did not with me. It didn't. A lot of people are outraged, and it's like, my child, my child, my child, my child. But let me tell you something. I have a nephew that plays football, and this is not something that is uh, unrealistic or something that doesn't happen. Let me tell you something. These boys get out on the field, okay? Now, they're, they're doing strenuous days. They're working all day. They're in college. They're still having to do their books. They got to get out on that field. They got to give it their all. And sometimes they need some other mo motherfucking motivation to do it all. Not only that, we don't know what caused the coach to go off like that. And sometimes with these boys, when they play in certain sports, you cannot give them no, uh, it's going to be all right. Sometimes it's a time and place for that. But sometimes it's a time and place to tell him, get the fuck up off your ass and do what the fuck you need to do. You think you gangster, you think you big and bad, because at the end of the day, sometimes ain't that what our parents told us? Like, you gonna learn this, 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 that, and the other, because they didn't want to see us uh, doing bad. He, I, I feel like that coach didn't want to see him out on the street. Everybody's like, oh, it looked like he wanted to say nigga. Did he say nigga? Did he say it? No. Now, here we got this coach that sat there and suspended himself. And good for you, coach, for taking accountability for your actions and what you did. I do feel like the only reason why you did it is because the video got out and you knew that people were going to see it anyway. So you suspended yourself before you could be suspended. But you guys, sometimes when it comes to a man and sometimes when it comes to uh, uh, a, a boy, 
they got to talk to them the way the, the, the way that they need to talk to them. That's why sometimes, you know, it, it is so important, not sometimes, but that's why it is important for a child to have the mother and the father in their lives, okay? And especially when you are raising a boy, it is so important for it to be, uh, for there not to be an absentee father in the picture because sometimes that boy can get out of hand and that, that dad needs to sit there and yoke that nigga up and be like, hey, yo, nigga, let me tell you who the fuck is in charge, okay? Sometimes they got to be pushed. Sometimes they got to know and, and have somebody getting their ass to sit there and, and, and set them straight, especially if they're trying to veer off the track, especially if this young man already has so much going for him. He's playing college football. He's in college. He's doing what he needs to do. He's already going against statistics. And you got somebody that cares enough about you to sit there and get this angry with you to sit there and be like, hey, you think that you're going to do this? No, nigga, I got something else for you. Now I know that that may be the, the the might be the unpopular opinion, but that's how I feel, you guys. We we gotta stop. It, it is fine to sit there. I teach, you know, uh, my nephews and stuff because I don't have any sons, but my nephews that are like my sons to me, I teach them that you guys can, you guys have to be able to express your feelings. You have to be able to talk about your feelings. And you have to be able to communicate. Just because you are a man does not mean that 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 you're a bitch if you if you communicate your feelings if you talk about your feelings. But at the same time, there are certain things to where it's like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You a man and you need to man the fuck up and do what the fuck you got to do. And I think in this situation, it may have been one of those situations. I would love to hear the backstory of, of, of what happened. But, you know, you guys, I remember being in high school and, 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 and those of y'all that watch my show that went to our high school, y'all know how the fuck Coach Wade was. Y'all know how to fuck Coach Wade was. Babe, you remember Coach Wade? Coach Wade used to curse motherfuckers out left and right, left and right, left and right. But at the end of the day, he loved those boys and would do anything for them. Sometimes a little tough love, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? All right, you guys, we got a new segment to the show uh, uh, now um, that we've added. It's time for the positivity break. You guys, I figure that, you know, look, I'm queen. Positivity break is back on the screen. I feel like that I am, you know, queen sharing, queen of the mess report where I cover the mess. So you don't have to stress. But I also think that it is really important that we also promote positivity and that we promote good things when we see them because we have so much negativity and mess going around around this world. And people are so interested when the messy shit breaks out. But then when the positive shit happens, it just gets uh, uh, swiped to the left. It gets swept underneath the rug. And that's why you'll see in the shows that I do, when positive stuff comes up, I like to put that in the show. But now I, we decided that we're going to have a segment dedicated to positivity. So let's go ahead and get into uh, for the positivity break, you guys. So let's go ahead and put her up on the screen. Babe. Let's put the next person up on the screen. Congrats are in order to Coco Goff, uh, <laughs> who was eight years old, dancing at the U.S., open um and now it is years later and she has won the championship you guys <laughs> this was amazing to watch uh this is a tennis player you guys she went up there to the u.s open she did what she had to do and it was so cute because you could see the video when she was eight years old dancing in the crowd and then here she is at it and she actually won won it the embrace between her and her father was so sweet. Her father was crying. She said that was the first time that she'd seen her father cry in her life. And it was beautiful. So congratulations to you, Coco. Uh, another strong black woman doing her thing. Go ahead, Coco. All right. So let's go ahead and put the next person up on the screen in Ellie Chapa. Let's put them up there, babe. All right. Now, you guys, we're still um, uh, in, in our positive positivity break segment. In Ellie Chapa goes to see a little boy with cancer that the doctors told him he only had one week left to live. And one of his wishes was to be able to speak to Ellie Chapa. Um, you guys, 
when I saw this story, I, I couldn't do nothing but cry. This this touched my heart so bad. Uh, NLE Chopper went to the hospital. They set up speakers. They had it booming to where the halls were shaking. The little boy was rapping. He was talking. Um, you know, and then not only that, but NLE Chopper called people like uh, uh, Kai Sinat and uh, I used to call him Kai Sinat, but Kai Sinat. Um, and allowed this boy to talk to him. He got him gifts. It was beautiful. The boy's name is Nino. You guys, let's go ahead and put him up on the screen, babe. This is the little boy right here. Um, Nino, okay. Uh, this is him, you know, in a little bit more better, healthier times. Uh, let's go ahead and put the next picture up on the screen, babe. Now, this is NLE Choppa, um, as well as Nino now and Nino's dad. Um this just touched my heart. And the thing is, you guys, is that we think that we have so many problems in the world. And you got to think about this little boy that's being so brave and is only worried about meeting his favorite artist. And you got to also think about that dad that is preparing to not be with his son. And, and you just got to look around, look at your loved ones, tell them that you love them and be grateful for your situation because it can always be worse. And I got to give props to NLE Chopper for taking the time to sit there and going to not just calling and talking to this little boy, but going to see this little boy. Now, you guys, I didn't know if I could promote it on YouTube because it is a GoFundMe account. But if you guys go to NLE Chopper's Instagram and uh, you look at this story, go to the last page, there is a GoFundMe for Nino um, where they're trying to raise money. You guys know that uh, hospital bills are very, very expensive. Uh, funeral expenses are very, very expensive. I hate to even have to say that, but um, just, you know, blessings to Nino and his family and NLE Chopper. You did your damn thing on that one. I had to put you uh, in the positivity break because you're a true soldier for that one. Props to you. All right, you guys. Now, <clears throat> let's get back into it. Let's go ahead. That was a positivity break. Let's go ahead and get back into the messy report. You guys, let's put him up on the screen, babe. Tyrese right here. He, yes, he is in the news again. This is a picture of Tyrese, Jess Hilarious, DJ Envy, and Charlemagne the God, okay, when he just appeared on their show on The Breakfast Club. Now, let's get into it. Tyrese cries while reflecting on a recent Breakfast Club interview. Says DJ Envy and Charlemagne showed him no compassion. It took everything in me to stay in my seat. He does, however, credit Jess Hilarious for being sympathetic during the interview. Now, this was an interview to where they interviewed Tyrese. Um, and you guys, if you've been following the stories we've been doing with Tyrese, he was going through a divorce. He was going through a mental breakdown. He was on meds. Uh, he was coming at people in crazy ways, allegedly. Well, during this interview, DJ Envy does sit there and does check Tyrese and tells him, you know, I backed up from you because you disrespected my wife and this, 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 that, and the other, and I almost punched you in the mouth and this, this, that, and the other. Now, Jess Hilarious was trying to defuse the situation and was trying to show compassion, but Charlemagne and DJ Envy was not hearing it, okay? Now, Tyrese in that interview was trying to explain to him, like, look, I was having a psychotic breakdown. I was on these meds. I, you know, if I said something, you know, that's not, that was not my intentions or whatever, well, afterwards, he was reflecting on it, and Tyrese was caught, yes, again, crying. Crying and saying exactly what I read to you guys. Now, I will say this. Um, I really can't sit there and say what to say when it comes to DJ Envy, because if I was him and somebody disrespected my wife, you know, look, that's that's his soulmate. That's his rib. So, you know, he should come in her defense, and he should say what needs to be said, and he should hold you accountable as a friend and say, hey, this wasn't cool. Um, however, I also feel like that goddamn Tyrese, if you had all that shit to say and it took you that long and it took, it was that hard for you to stay in your seat, nigga, you should have said something while you was motherfucking damn, nigga, you could have still used restraint and stayed in your seat and set that nigga straight. But nigga, you ain't saying nothing like a bitch. And then you're going to sit there and go afterwards and motherfucking cry like a bitch. Now, I'm not saying you a bitch because you a man crying. I'm sitting there and saying, because if it took everything for you to stay in your seat, nigga, it, you can say something. Hey, nigga, I don't like how the fuck you talking to me. Bitch, I told you I was going through a motherfucking psychotic breakdown, nigga. You ever been through a psychotic breakdown? No. Maybe not saying it that aggressively, but explaining and, and, and 
and, you know, and talking to them because DJ Envy, I also got to say, you know, you got to be a little bit more uh, sympathetic. If this was your friend and this was truly your friend and your brother, like you said, then be a little bit more sympathetic and understand that he was going through things. When we go through stuff, it may be grieving. It may be a hard time. You may hit rock bottom. Sometimes you do act abnormal. You 100% do. And if you are really my friend and you really fuck with me, don't kick me while I'm down. Don't sit there and talk about me because I was going through a hard time and I may have acted differently. Don't do that to me. If you're going to be there for me, motherfucking be there for me. I hate bitches that act like bitch ass niggas and they want to get hard, but you want to get hard going off of somebody's motherfucking hard time. You want to get hard and try to check somebody that you know is going through a motherfucking hard time. If you ask me, that's a bitch move. You wanted to box them in the mouth. You didn't box them in the mouth. So stop getting all aggressive and angry now. DJ Envy, you like to sit there and say all this shit about how you're not going to like, you, you don't want nobody disrespecting your wife. But nigga, was you thinking about that when you was cheating on her and fucking another bitch? But I digress. If y'all were really friends and y'all was really brothers and y'all could have handled this again, another thing that could have been handled behind the scenes. Because here's the thing. If you had that much aggression towards him and you were still that angry towards him, DJ Envy, why the fuck have him on the show? Why the fuck have him on the show? You should have had that conversation before y'all got on the show. And Jess props to you for sitting there and having compassion and trying to defuse the situation. And Tyrese, stop motherfucking crying. Stop crying, nigga. It's going to be all right. Let's get to the next topic on the docket. Let's put this bald-headed nigga up on the screen. Here we go. Joe Budden, everybody. Joe Budden says Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's song Bongo sounds like two women, two women who can't make a song. There's nothing in it to make it stay. Now, Joe, I just done about had enough of you running your motherfucking mouth. Okay? This nigga just done got off of drugs, allegedly, and just can't stop running his motherfucking mouth and causing trouble. Now, let's go ahead and put the next picture up on the screen, uh, babe. This is a picture, you guys, of Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion, big screen first, then small screen. This is a picture of Cardi B and Meg, Meg, Megan Thee Stallion on their, uh, the set of their new uh, video, their new song, Bongos, okay? Now, I think that it's a catchy uh, song. You know what I'm saying? Is it one of my favorites? Like, favorite, favorite? No. But do I think that it's catchy? Yes. Do I think it's going to blow up on TikTok? Absolutely. Do I think that it was a smart uh, marketing strategy? Yes. A lot of times these celebrities now are making songs that are catchy and trendy to TikTok. And, and they blow up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, WAP did it. You know, UP did it. You know what I'm saying? So do I think that uh, it's great that these two ladies got together and, and did what they needed to do? Yes, I think it's a good bop that it's something to have fun to. And this is this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? Is it my favorite Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion song? No. But do I like it? Yes, absolutely. Now, Joe also went on to sit there and say that that type of music is not in nowadays, that what is in is ratchet music, music like Sexy Red. Let me tell you something. I got to tell you this, and I got to be motherfucking honest. I disagree with you, Joe. Okay? Sexy Red is just, for me, too motherfucking ratchet. Too motherfucking ratchet. You got this bitch walking around, got darn parading motherfucking diseases and all the shit that she's saying and unprotected sex and raw dog queen and all this shit. You got darn music um, song and video that she just did with Lotto. Bow, 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 bow. Peaches and eggplants. None in my stomach. Like, all that. Like, come on, man. Come on. I, and I don't know. I, I, it, it's the way that she. The, the way that she does it, I mean, Sexy Red just isn't, isn't my cup of tea. I don't think there's anything um, sexy about her. And I, I got to disagree with Joe. I think that that darn, um, there is still a market and it's still out still out there for people that are as big as Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi to sit there and, and be embracing their body and singing what the hell they're singing about. You know what I'm saying? I just think that, you know, it, it looks better when they do it. I would have to really disagree with you with the, with the whole Sexy Red and all that stuff. And what the fuck do you know? What, what the fuck do you know? When you said this comment, it made me think that you was back on drugs, allegedly. You was, as they say with Lotto, when she was talking about sniffing them ski slopes, that's what it seemed like you was doing, Joe, allegedly. Because I don't even know how you can make a comment like that. You sound like a hating ass bitch that's hating on two females. And you can't say shit because, nigga, when you was motherfucking rapping, you wasn't even doing shit. So how the fuck you going to sit there and comment on two females when you was in the rap game and, nigga, you couldn't even dominate the motherfucking rap game? 
Just saying. I think that the song is nice. Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion did they think Joe stopped being a motherfucking hater. Let's get to the next topic on the docket. All right, you guys, it is time for the next segment. It's time for Let's Get Into It. All right, you guys, here we go. Hitmaker says he won't be putting the footage out of Tink putting the paws on him. It was a bad move made by her. He's going to have to, uh, she's going to have to pay. Now, let me explain this and let me break this down. This is hit makeup right here. Go ahead and put hit makeup on the screen, uh, babe. Now, this is hit makeup, but a lot of you guys may know him as Young Berg. Now, Young Berg was uh, a rapper, okay? He now is a pretty successful producer, okay? He got into a bit of trouble. You also may know him because he was on Love Me Hip Hop Hollywood, all right? He was so-called allegedly messing around with Hazel E, and then after that went to her uh, good friend, Masika, okay? Then he ended up getting kicked off the show, um, when an altercation had happened between him and Masika, um, and it was said allegedly that he put his hands on her. Okay, since then he changed his name. It went from Young Berg to Hitmaker. I still look at him and think of Young Berg. I still look at him and think of him as a trifling ass nigga. Well, anyway, he has been dating this artist, this R&B artist. You guys may know her. Her name is Tink. Let's go ahead and put Tink up on the screen, babe. This is Tink right here, guys. Beautiful, beautiful chocolate girl. Okay, so apparently they were dating, all right, and they are going through a breakup. He happened to be at a restaurant in Mexico, okay, for his birthday, and Tink ended up showing up and sitting next to him, but he was with another female. Now, the end result ended up on ended up in Tink going to the car and putting her hands on him and him getting video of it. So Tink came out, and she sat there and said the story before he had a chance to put the video out. OK, he says that he's going to let the lawyers handle it and that she's going to have to pay. Now, here's the thing. I like Tink and everybody's riding with Tink because Tink keeps to herself. She stayed quiet. She's another underrated artist. I cannot name the songs off the top of my head, but I have heard a lot of Tink songs and she is a, a, a really good, talented artist. OK, um, however, Tink, on this one, I got to sit there and I got to say you got yourself into this situation. Like you said, everybody warned you about this nigga. Now, Tink took the Instagram and got on live and sat there and was telling everybody how this man was asking her for $2 million and he was mad at her because she wouldn't give him $2 million. And if he's supposed to be hit maker and he's supposed to be helping make them his nigga, and he asked you for $2 million, well, Tink, that should have been one of your motherfucking red flags right there, and you should have got damn ran. But like you said, you ignored what everybody told you, and you still fuck with the nigga. Now you're suddenly surprised when the nigga fucks you over, Okay. So Tink goes on to tell everybody, hey, you know what? You're fucking with a nigga that ate my ass. He eats my ass. This nigga eats my ass. And let me tell you something. I don't know what the fuck is going on with the ass eating. Okay? It, I don't know if goddamn Sukiana doing the motherfucking song and sitting there and being like, eat, eat a nigga's ass. Eat a nigga's I don't know. But you guys, there's a goddamn ass eating pandemic out there. Everybody talking about eating ass. Everybody motherfucking doing it and owning it. Good for you. But I just had to goddamn sit there and say something because every time I turn left and I turn right, nigga, it is somebody talking about eating ass. And I ain't doing no shit like that. You can eat my ass all day long, but I'm not eating no nigga's ass. I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't care. Call me a poop. I don't give a fuck. I ain't going there, nigga's ass. Not gonna do it. Plus, my nigga wouldn't even, he wouldn't even let me go towards his ass. Okay? I almost went there. I almost went there. I almost went there. But I'm not, I'm not gonna go there. Well, I, short story. Long story short. One time he was in the hospital and had to get surgery. He was having a little bit of constipation. And they told me that I had to stick something up his booty hole to make him go to the bathroom. And I tried one time. That nigga said, nope, I just want shit. So that nigga ain't letting nobody go. He ain't letting me go near uh, his booty hole. He ain't going to let nobody go near his booty hole. It's just what it is. And I wouldn't. That'd be one of them things where I have to sit there and say, I love you, but I ain't motherfucking doing it. Okay? So anyway, back to the story. That was just a quick little side story, you guys. Let me all in on my life a little bit. So anyway, uh, Tink comes out with this. Now, Tink, you know, she's really looking like a delusional bitch right now. What it looks like is that she got jealous that he was with another uh, another woman. She tried to sit there and show him attention, get on tables, dance, text him. He wasn't paying her attention. She got mad. And it is what it is, Tink. He played in your motherfucking face. He played in your face. 
and bet you if he ain't make no hits for you for to get no money from you, and if he if if, if he truly asks you to borrow that motherfucking two million and you have that two million or you refuse to give him that two million, bitch, you about to give him something now because now it's on video of you putting your motherfucking hands on. Goddamn young bird, hit maker, whatever the fuck your name is. Leave this girl alone. This is another female that you that came into their life and you just ruining her life. That's all you do is just ruin bitches' lives. That's all you motherfucking do. Hazel, Eve, Masika, you name it. That's all you motherfucking do. Just leave her alone. Let Tink go on and do what the hell she's doing. Okay? Tink, leave this nigga alone. We don't want to hear it. We barely get to hear about your music, and then we finally do hear about you. It's some goddamn uh, shady-ass drama shit like this. Focus on your motherfucking talent and the beautiful craft that you have, and fuck this nigga. Who gives a fuck about Hitmaker? Okay? You guys, it's time for the next segment. It is time for Address the Mess. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold up. Address the Mess. All right, you guys. So, pod a podcaster was forced to end the show after Dance Mom star Abby Lee Miller admits she still is attracted to high school football players, not ones that used to be in high school, but ones that still are. Is what she said. Now, since then, Abby Lee Miller attempted to clean up um, and said that <clears throat> her attraction to high she, she has an attraction to high school athletes. They must be able to go out to a club and gamble in Vegas, is what she said. Now, let me tell you something, you sick fuck. Can we put her up on the screen so everybody can see who the fuck Abby Lee Miller is? Now, see, it was fucked up when you was on Dance Moms and you were sitting there and tormenting those those little girls. And I know, however, I did say what I just said about the football player and sometimes tough love is involved. And you did give some tough love, but then you just were a bitch purposely you did shit that was not but you could see that you had favorites you could see that you were not treating the girls fairly you could see based on what mama you like that you you thought you could say whatever the fuck you wanted to say you actually threw temper tantrums you actually threw chairs you were a bitch a bitch and now you're on this podcast sitting there and saying how high school football players turn you on. You're old ass. How the fuck old are you? You like 60 something, 70 something? Because you look it. You look it. And you're literally talking about how you are still attracted to high school football players. And then you sit there and you double down, you nasty bitch, and go sit there and say something like, not ones that used to be in high school, but the ones that still are in high school. And let me tell you, the person that was hosting the podcast even tried to save you. She said, well, the ones that used to be in high school, but that are coaches now. And you said, no, the ones that, not the ones that used to be in high school, but the ones that still are. Now we need to bring goddamn uh, information to this. I feel like this is a pedophile, allegedly, that actually admitted what the fuck she likes. And while I think that there is no motherfucking uh, football player, high school football player that's going to sit there and, you know what I'm saying, and try to fuck you. But goddamn, Abby, you already motherfucking went to jail once. This bitch already went to jail once for breaking the law. She a criminal. She a criminal. And now you want to sit here and talk about doing it. That is disgusting. And the fact of thinking about you. Oh, I almost said something really inappropriate, but I ain't going to go there. I ain't going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Mm. Mm. I see why the podcast got shut down. But now for you to sit there and come back and, 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 and say there was nothing that she could do to justify it, even though she tried to. And she sat there and she said, OK, well, I'm a, you got to be old enough to gamble. But that's not what the fuck you said, nigga, because the day in high school, they're not old enough to gamble in Las Vegas. They're not old enough to get into the club. Maybe you want them to get into the old woman sugar mama club. Maybe that's the club that you want them to be in. But I feel like, hey, just like we said with anybody else, had that been somebody in the black community, y'all be tearing them the motherfucking shreds right now. Hold her accountable. Hold her accountable. The white wrinkled old lady community need to hold her accountable. Okay? completely unacceptable. And I think the only thing it shows is the character that we all knew that you were. We all knew you were sick. We all knew you were twisted. And this just explains even more how motherfucking twisted you are. Now, we're going to continue to follow this story, you guys, and I'm going to keep you updated on, on what the fuck is going to happen because it's got to it's got to be some accountability on this one. <laughs> 
Okay, it, she's got to be held accountable on this one. No way. And, and you know, I don't even know if it will do something. Uh, I don't know if you can not on be arrested for anything like that. And I'm not sitting there and saying that it would it would go that far. But what I'm saying is, she's in the profession. And she, her profession is her working with young kids. I wouldn't trust her around the kids. It's got to be something when she's admitting, uh, pretty much that I'm a she's a pedophile allegedly. That uh, you, you you can't be around kids like that. Anyway, those are just my thoughts, you guys. I will keep you updated with the story and let you guys know uh, what's going on with that. All right, you guys, we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. You guys make sure that you are, you head over to Instagram and you follow me at Royal Queen Sharon. Also make sure that you are subscribing and click that notification bell down below so that you can be notified anytime that I put a video on. For the most part, it's every Monday uh, night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes it will air on Tuesday like it is going to, uh, like it is tonight. Um, but click that notification bell. That way you guys can be notified anytime a video gets put on. You guys know who I am. I'm Queen Sharon, Queen of the Mess Report, where I cover the mess so you don't have to stress. And thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Hot Off the Press. And until next time, deuces.